So it's uh, it's happened again. So this is some creative photo ideas that you can do at home. to another video here at Better Media. My name is Nathan and it's an absolute pleasure to see all of your wonderful faces here today. Thank you so much for clicking on that thumbnail. Before we get started, I'm gonna shout out that I use the hashtag over on Instagram, BMPix2020. So if you do in fact use Instagram, please start using that hashtag and that way I can have a look over your photographs and you know I can shout you guys out and we can connect. Also, if you haven't done already, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. We release content each and every single week and I'm doing everything from photo walks when I can to situations like this, where I, you know, it's the first day of the new lockdown, not entirely sure what the rules are for photographers to go into the city. So I thought for this week, instead of actually going out and getting into trouble, I will come up with some nice creative ways to make photographs and content and, you know, really, really cool stuff without having to leave the confines of your little bubble. And that's what we're gonna to do today. So, like always, when I try to come up with these type of ideas, I go over Instagram, I go over Facebook, I go online, and I have a nice little look around to see what is actually out there in this wonderful creative world that we are in. And I've discovered a lot of people like to work with masking and manipulating photographs of several photographs and make it into one photograph. So. With this video, I'm gonna show you how to make some really, really cool photographs, a little bit like this. And then to show you how you can do it at home by yourself. So uh, let's, let's get this all set up, shall we? Okay, so for something that looks quite complicated, it's actually quite easy. I'm gonna show you how the whole process goes through. The hardest part of this is the setup pretty much. And all I've done for that particular photograph of me with the boxes and stuff is that I've taken a cardboard box and I've cut a hole in the bottom of it, which quite simply means I can come halfway through it, do my little poses, and then in Photoshop a little bit later on, sort of just scribble everything else out that I don't need. And it's all about layering and blending and everything else like that. So this is, that's it, that's generally it. Like, it's all about the setup, which is important because the more you can do right now, the less you need to do in Photoshop later. Okay, so that's pretty much how I set up the scene. Let me show you or tell you how I sort of set up the camera now. Okay, so ugh, give me a second. Right, so I've set up my camera. Now, technically, this is the last time I want to touch my camera without the entire shoot. Let me explain why. I've got the majority of the room in, in the frame. So I've got like the walls, a bit of ceiling, the floor, everything in frame. Now for this to actually work, I'm gonna to need to take a clean slate photograph, which basically means it's a photograph with nothing in shot whatsoever. Not me, not the box, nothing. Just what I want as my main background. That needs to be nice and clean. The reason being, so in Photoshop, that will be the bottom photograph. So when I've got all my layers, so my different people who are scattered around the room, that photo will be the main bottom, so I know when I start rubbing people out, like say the top part of me or the bottom part of me, or whatever I don't want in my photograph, there is in fact a clean slate underneath that particular photograph, which should be exactly the same. So I don't want to be moving my camera about anywhere. So I've set my camera up to be linked with my phone, so all I need to do is use my phone to set focus, to do anything like that. So now that I've set this up, I need to leave it alone. And with any other photograph like this that you want to sort of layer on top, it's always good to have a clean slate. So that way you can sort of put the photograph of your subject, say you or whoever you're taking the photograph of, say if you're making them float or if you're making them do this, anything like that, you have got the exact same background behind it. So when you stick them on, you can simply just don't have to worry about what's going on behind. Or what I'll probably explain a little bit later on, is that you could probably just cut out your subject and you can move them about a little bit within the clean slate as well, okay? So that's that set up. 
I'm gonna start taking some photographs and then afterwards I will show you how I did the actual photograph itself. So that is it. Now let me show you how this photograph is done. Nice and simple, nice and easy. I took the photographs that I took and I put them into Photoshop. I made sure that the clean slate, remember the photograph with nobody in it, was at the very, very bottom. I then took the other photographs, the ones of me scattered around the room and I piled them on top. I then turned off all the layers that I did not want to work with, leaving the one layer with just me so you couldn't see the rest of them. And then I manipulated that how I wanted to make it look. So I got rid of my body, bleed it out and because I had that layer behind, obviously what you can see underneath the box was nothing. And then individually I went through each photograph and I did exactly the same. I then went through all the layers and blended them together so you could see all of the different characters in the same scene. I then took that, all those layers and I exported that as a proper photograph, a JPEG, and then I exported it into Lightroom. This is when I did the final edit. And this is what it turned out. Now, as you can see, it's not that complicated. If you know what you're doing within Photoshop and you know the tools that you can use, it is very simple. All you're doing is cutting somebody out or you're masking somebody in and you're just basically rubbing out anything you don't want. But because you've got those layers behind you, it's not that difficult. You're just basically taking the things out, getting your little rubber or your little um, brush and you're just rubbing the parts of the photograph that you don't want out. And because you've got that clean slate, that wonderful sort of safety net behind you, all you have to do is make sure the photographs are in line. Hence the reason why you want your camera on a tripod. And once you've set up your shot, you leave it alone. Do not touch it again. And then just put your camera on the timer, use a remote trigger and then pose the best way you can. Um, now, because I like my rule of sixes, I went out and I took some other photographs, some other examples, and they look a little bit like this. And again, using the same technique, I did a sort of like a, a, a clean slate of the background, put myself in it, and then I did my positions, then did the same routine within Photoshop, and then took it all out and put it into Lightroom, and I did the final color grading edit in Lightroom itself. And you can have a lot of fun with it. Like, look around the house, see what you've got. You're looking for things to go through things, to go around things, to go underneath things. It's a lot of fun. And at the moment, we are once again sort of locked indoors, and we're trying to find other ways to be creative. So guys, go ahead. If you do try this technique, please use the hashtag BMPix2020 over on Instagram. I would love to see your photographs. And yeah, I'll give you a shout out on the channel as and when it happens. But until next time, guys, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps an awful lot. And if you did like this video, please hit the like button just down there. It takes seconds out of your day. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I've been Nathan. You've been sensational. Thank you and goodbye. Mwah, 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 mwah.